Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to do a little tribute to a photographer that I got to know a few years ago. Many of you might remember her from the Artist series. Her name is Lourdes Grobet. Lourdes was a brilliant photographer. I believe one of the best photographers that Mexico had to offer. And unfortunately, she passed away yesterday at the age of 81. And yesterday at the time I'm filming this on July 15th, 2022. And I want to talk a little bit about her. I believe that she deserved way more recognition uh, than what she actually had during her career. I mean, she was recognized by museums and did a lot of serious work, but she was largely unknown by a lot of people. And I want to back up a little bit to the opportunity that I had in 2016 to interview her and tell you a little bit about the behind the scenes on that. Now, if you're not familiar with her work, she's probably best known for a number of series that she did on Lucha Libre Wrestling. And at the time, I remember seeing those images and I knew very little about Lucha Libre Wrestling until I started researching for this interview. I knew about the mess and the cultural significance and the fact that it had over the years become a big deal in Mexico. But when I was actually putting that together and getting to know Lourdes for that interview, I learned a lot about it and it made this really special for me. So Lourdes started out as a conceptual photographer in the 1960s when she was in art school. It was very in vogue at the time. And after school, she started combining a lot of the conceptualism that she had learned in school with her passion for wrestling, which is something that she enjoyed since she was a kid. Now, one thing I did not know about Lourdes is for a number of years, she had been working in collaboration with an indigenous theater ensemble. And so these were performances that happened out in the country and they were a harken back to the pre-Hispanic era of Mexico. So we're talking no theater lighting. They're performed outdoors. It was the original stories, the original costumes. And what's really interesting is this connection that she made and she made it in the video and I'll link that below. If you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. But the whole connection between the idea of theater and how that incorporated into Lucha Libre work and the whole idea of the mask and the warrior and the cultural significance and the way it interacts with the audience. And it really opened my eyes to this whole cultural aspect that I was very much unfamiliar with. So she had a very interesting line that she walked between the art world and what essentially would be sports photography with Lucha Libre wrestling. She was also of a time before it was overly commercialized in Mexico where she got to know some of the most famous wrestlers in that entire medium. And we're talking about people like El Santo, she was very good friends with, as well as Blue Damon. But the body of work that I was most interested in that I really wanted to ask her about when I got there was this series of images that she she did with wrestlers dressed up in the mask but working their day jobs and there's another series that she did with their families and I want to play you a little excerpt of that because I think it's just brilliant and you're going to see kind of how her mind worked with all this and how it came to be so this is an excerpt from that artist series video it's a relationship a straight relationship between the action and the public so I took a lot of photographs about the public and then I decided that um, because the ones that fight all every week, they are allowed to have a good, uh, earn good money. But the ones that are not, they have to have another jobs to solve that problem. So I start going to see what they used to do. I mean, I found uh, people working in restaurants, bodyguards teachers. I was going in and in and deeply and deeply and then I decided to start visiting them in their houses to see how they live. They are normal people, they have their families. I love the Diabolica because she is a Diabolica with that name. She's rude and but the most lovely mother with her, her children i mean she she was the way that she was tr uh, treating and deal with her children i mean it was just amazing it was full of love a, 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 a lady that is uh, ruda and they say all oh, these dichotomies i mean i love them so i i like i understood about this country taking photographs about wrestling Lourdes Scrobet was an amazing photographer, one of my favorites, and I'm very privileged to have gotten not only to meet her, but do that video to kind of preserve and share with you guys. She, I think, is just worthy of so much more recognition than she ever got during her career, and I think she's just brilliant. The whole infusion of kind of a sense of humor uh, with these kind of formal portraits, and I, it's just, it's amazing work. I know it's hard to categorize. 
Um, anyway, I just think she's brilliant. And I want to share kind of a quirky behind the scenes story with you guys. So when I went to Mexico to film those three interviews, she was a little bit difficult to schedule. She was working on this big project on the Bering Strait. It was a video project. And so she was flying between Mexico City and Alaska. And we were able to find a time, fortunately, that worked out. And so when I went over there, you know, you're doing this interview, went over to her apartment. We filmed the whole thing in front of that great painting of Blue Damon behind her. And I was thinking earlier about like, you know, you're trying to put together an interview, but I need B-roll to go with it. And so I'm trying to think what would work really well for this. And so it kind of occurred to me, what if I offered to take her down to the arena and we could go watch the wrestling matches? We'll take cameras and I could get some B-roll of her. Plus, I think it would be a lot of fun. So I asked her and she said, absolutely. She said, I'm dying to share that with you. Let's go to the wrestling matches. It'll be a blast. And I said, okay. And then what happened is we filmed that that video, I guess late morning, early afternoon. After we left, I got a call from her and she said, oh my gosh, she said, I completely forgot I have a family commitment that I've got to do this evening. So I'm going to have to rain check on wrestling matches with you. And I said, well, I said, no problem at all. I completely understand. I said, just promise me next time I come to Mexico, we'll go see the matches together. And unfortunately, I have not been to Mexico since. So... Lourdes, if somehow you're watching this, just know that in the next world, hopefully I can join you and finally we will go see El Santo and Blue Damon in the arena together. Anyway, she was an incredible woman, a brilliant photographer, and I wanted to share that with you guys in this video. So go check out her interview. If you haven't already, I will link it up here and I will catch you guys in the next video. So until then, later.